Roll call. Mayor Connie Ball. Here. Vice Mayor Mike Profit. Here. Alderman Jeff Fancher. Here. Alderman Roger Gribble. Here. Alderman Mike Hansel. Here. Alderman Bobby Knight. Here. City Attorney Terry Hurst. Here. City Administrator James Fincham. Here. Thank you, Tina. Um, before we start the meeting, uh, some thank yous need to go out to some of our departments. Uh, received a call this week from Tommy Bible at Jefferson Cock Gas. Of course, that was concerning the uh, restaurant that had a severe gas leak. And uh, he would have liked to have been here himself to personally thank the fire department the police department for the job well done, the professionalism in helping prevent a major disaster. And uh, that, that comes from Tommy Bible and he may try to be here at next month's meeting but uh, that meant so much to him and I think a lot of people in the community don't realize what a touch and go situation had developed out there. and. Uh, this proves that our officers, our firemen, are all trained to deal with uh, such events as that. And we appreciate you all so much. Our Newport Utilities was also mentioned in that group, the fire and police and the utility, they was also mentioned too. They appreciate all y'all did to get that thing under control. And the street department. Yeah. Uh, we had a great snow. I enjoyed it. I hope everyone did. Except for the street department. Except for the street department. But I have, in all my years, I have never seen the streets open up as quick as they did during this event. And that was one of the biggest snows we've had in several years. And uh, the street department, uh, I, I never went on a road anywhere, and I kind of rode around. There was not a road anywhere that hadn't been scraped and somehow treated to make traffic movable for most everyone. And street department being y'all will be commended for that. <laughs> Have I left anybody out that anybody knows of? Okay, item three is the approval of the minutes uh, for the meeting on December the 13th, 2016. Do we have a motion to approve as written? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any uh, discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying yes. <coughs> yes. Any opposed? I hear none. Uh, before we get, uh, there's no proclamations under four. James, before I get to your report, uh, the agenda. Uh, went out a day or two earlier because of the uh, inclement weather that was being forecast and Newport Utilities had was going to ask to be on the agenda so I would like to get council to make a motion in a second and approve waiving the rules so that they can be placed as the last item on the new business. So moved. Second. Got a motion in a second. Any other <coughs> questions or discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying yes. Yes. Opposed is no. I hear none. Okay, item five, uh, report from City Administrator James Fincham. Well, thank you, Mayor. If you'd kept talking, I wouldn't have had anything because you, you got two well, of them. I was mine. trying to. Um, <laughs> Tommy, Tommy Bible also uh, contacted me and expressed his appreciation and, uh, and bragged on all our people about what a good job they did so I had that on here and also I had the um, the, the implementation plan for the broadband for NUB. The only other thing I have, um, you all had asked that we get the folks that uh, did our roof to take a look at the grammar school roof. They have done that and they have sent back a report. I've got it here. It's many pages long. You know, I, will, well, I didn't bring copies but I'd be glad to get you a copy if you want it. But uh, the number they came back with uh, to do a roof, an encapsulated roof up there like they did here, with a 15-year warranty, it was $104,000, and with a 20-year warranty, it's $107,000. And so uh, that's the report back that they made. That has, all this has been sent to the grammar school, so they are aware of the findings and have a copy of it. 
and that's all I got. Big difference in big difference in what they priced it at versus getting another set of eyes on it. That's right. James, uh, what's the status of the uh, uh, distillery down near the Hatfield and McCoys? I've well, heard there, several rumors, but well, they're working. They're down there. They've been down there every day working. If you go inside, or when you can see, I've not been inside, but I've looked through the doors that are open, and you can see they're doing frame the framing in our framework to subdividing the, the the building. But I couldn't tell you how far along they are with that. Mr. Barber, you can I'd heard. Okay, well, if Mr. Graham, I saw him. Yeah, okay. yeah he's here. Won't you give an update real quick, or if you don't mind, or we talked to you before the meeting. I've had an opportunity to speak with several of you about what's been going on down there, but they've had uh, some delays uh, with some health issues with some of the uh, other partners involved there, so that's kind of to see what you see down there. But uh, uh, spoken to uh, the investors and the uh, group down here that you see on a daily basis, both times over the last couple of weeks, they're getting back on track now, so we should have some updates uh, pretty real soon. Uh, I've asked them after we meet uh, uh, this week to come in and the next meeting and give a brief update on where uh, They are due for a their annual uh, progress report to, in April. I'll go back in April. Um, so they'll be providing that, uh, that progress report. That um, you know where they're at right now. I think they just got approval from the state with their license to produce. Um, they have just hired a master distiller for that, um, and then hopefully they'll be finishing up the interior and get started on the exterior before too long. So um, it's delayed significantly since the last uh, was what they projected and, and hoped, but it looks like they're picking back up steam and moving forward. So. Okay. Have we released our money yet? The hundred thousand that we were to uh, the yes. grant. Half. Part. We've released half of it. Has their financial? Do you know where their financial situation has changed in any way? Uh, not, not at this point. Um, and we'll be happy if, uh, assuming that our uh, discussions go well with uh, repair. And then we, you know, we'll have options at that point to make sure everything's good. But they're still under contract with their uh, provisions, and they'll have to abide by those. If they don't perform those, and they are obligated to pay back that money. If, okay. You know, it, uh, have they lost the name Hatfield and McCoy? Uh, at this point, no, they have not. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, there was a possibility of that happening at one point. Um, since then, they have indicated that that is in the back of the restored. restored. Um, so, hopefully, that will continue, but we've asked them to verify that and write and get assurances that they will continue. All right. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lucas. Yep. Okay. Item 6 is a board appointment, police civil service appointed by the Civil Service Board itself uh, has appointed Stephen Smith and we need to verify that by vote. No, we don't? No. Okay. Okay. I know all the sheep are wrong. Okay. Item 7. Report from Tanner Preservation Alliance. I don't have anything. Thanks, Carlin. Item 8, Old Business. Um, consideration of the first reading of Ordinance 2016 12, amending the City of Newport Municipal Code Title 7 Fire Protection and Fireworks Chapter 3 Fire Codes, adopting the 2012 International Fire Code and the 2012 NFPA 101 life safety code to the uh, municipal code. And Mayor, I just about read that full caption, but let me reread it just okay. to make sure we got it right. It's ordinance number 2016-12, an ordinance to amend the city of Newport 
Municipal Code, Title Seven, Fire Protection and Fire <coughs> Works, Chapter Three, Fire Codes, adopting of the 2012 International Fire Code and the 2012 NFPA 101 Life Safety Code. Okay, thank you. Do we have a motion to approve on the first reading? This would be the second, second reading. Second reading. Second reading, Mayor. My agenda says the first. First. Yeah. We approved this life. Yeah, this would be the second reading after we had the public hearing a few minutes ago, Mayor. Okay. I think the agenda says first, but the yes. orange paper here says the second. So second reading. Yeah, I'll make the motion to accept on okay. the second reading. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying yes. 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 Opposes no. I hear none. Thank you. Let's move to new business item A is consideration of resolution 2017-01 uh, authorizing the city of Newport to apply for the community development block grant. This is a uh this is just keeping in line with the uh, timeline of the CDBG. Uh, should the deadline be in February, we need to do this so that if we find a section of the downtown stormwater repairs that need to be made, that can be a good phase one uh, that we can find funding for so we're not just using straight tax dollars to fix it. This is what it is. Uh, okay. Again, it doesn't commit us to anything unless we. Um, or awarded the grant, accepted, and then you all vote on the actual project that we do. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the resolution? I make a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying yes. 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 Opposed is no. I hear none. Thank you, Jimmy. You're welcome. Thank you. Just to make sure the record is straight, when we had the public hearing, it was mentioned as the first reading. And in the agenda, it's mentioned on the vote as the first reading, but it's actually the second reading, just so we'll make sure we've got the record correct for that. Item B is discussion of audit for physical year 2015-16. Uh, break. Uh, Brown, Jake, and McDaniel. Frank. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. I think you all have an audit booklet in front of you that contains your government-wide and fund financial statements. Uh, we did complete that in December. It was filed with the Comptroller's office uh, during that time frame on a timely basis. It is quite a comprehensive document. It's about 120 pages long or so. Uh, it does contain all of the entities that are included in the city government, which does include the school system, its general purpose school fund, and its federal projects fund, its cafeteria fund. It also includes Newport Utilities as a departmental uh, business enterprise of the city both its uh, electric department and its water and sewer department. So they're included in this report also and it includes separate financial statements for them along with footnote disclosures related to them. But uh, obviously I think you all would be primarily concerned with the governmental funds of the city, which your major governmental fund is your general fund. Uh, you do have several other uh, special revenue funds, capital projects fund, uh, and so forth. So those are included in this report also. Uh, the table of contents does describe, you know, the contents in, in detail. Uh, I would point out just three or four things that I think would be of uh, uh, most concern to you. Uh, starting on page four is the incident audit report. It's three pages long. It is a standard report. It does cover all the entities that I just described to you as far as their financial activities from July 1st, 15th to June 30th, 16. Uh, if you look at that report, uh, the first paragraph describes uh, the entities that we're giving an opinion on. 
since the governmental entities has two sets of statements here, a government-wide statement and fund financial statements, which mirror your budget adoption type statements. Uh, those are uh, listed here in the uh, description of, of those entities that are considered. The governmental activities, the business type activities, each major fund, and the remaining aggregate fund information along with uh, the notes to the financial statements, and that makes up the basic financial statements of the city. Uh, it talks about management's responsibility in the second paragraph. It talks about the auditor's responsibility in the third, fourth, and fifth paragraph. I'll point out that we did audit under three levels of audit standards in doing the, the, this audit. We follow generally accepted audit standards here in the U.S. We follow government auditing standards as issued by the federal government. And because you had ma uh, major programs and the federal expenditures in the city on a combined basis were over $750,000, we also did a single audit engagement related to your federal assistance programs. Uh, so those are included in this report also. Uh, on page five at the top is our opinions on all these documents. And we do state there that the financial statements present fairly in all material respects, the financial position of the governmental activities, which is the schools and the city, the business type activities, which is Newport Utilities, departments, each major fund, which in this case, there's two major funds presented, the general fund of the city and the general purpose school fund of the schools, and the aggregate remaining information, which is all the other funds uh, on a combined basis, and the respective budgetary comparisons for the general fund and the, and the general purpose school fund. Uh, we did not have any modifications in any way to the financial statements and they're fairly presented in all material respects. And this is a clean opinion on all the financial statements. The rest of the information does discuss uh, the supplementary information, management's discussion analysis. There's a lot of trend information here related to pension plans, since both the city and the schools are participatory in the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System, several plans. Uh, that data on a trend basis is included. We give a positive assurance opinion on all the supplementary information. However, the introductory and management discussion analysis and the pension trend information is management's documents or they've been furnished by Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System. We do not give an opinion on those. And lastly, on page six, we tell the reader of the financial statements that there are two other reports that we've issued as auditors that are required and under a governmental audit here in Tennessee. And that's a uh, internal control report at both the financial statement level and on compliance. And also a second report that's required by the Uniform Guidance in the United States related to the major, <coughs> uh, major program activity that you receive in federal expenditures. And, you know, we're telling the reader those exist. They need to read those to get a full picture of the audit engagement. So we are given a clean opinion. Uh, the management discussion analysis that follows has a lot of good information in it, some condensed tables. It's a good read for you all to, to look through and better understand the financial statements and the activities that occurred during the year. You all did have a uh, year in Newport. You had a, a good financial year this year. Uh, you had uh, good growth in your fund balance, and you uh, had uh, good profitability in your utilities, and the school system operated within their acceptable range. Uh, fund balance uh, continues to grow to get you all really on solid footing that you were not in three years ago financially. You've had two good years of fund balance growth and it's putting you in a position where your, your net fund balance position is, is getting to an acceptable level and your cash flow position is greatly improved and to keep you from having to take on uh, tax anticipation notes that you've done for a long time. Uh, you've been able to avoid that. So I, I commend you, I commend your management and, and the board on taking the actions necessary to get yourself in a better financial uh, 
position and greater financial stability. Uh, so I've got a lot of good things to say about your financial growth and uh, your revenue and fund balance growth. You can go through the report on your own and you can see that. If you want to look at the general fund in particular, and I would encourage you to do that, you can find a budget versus uh, uh, actual analysis starting on page 34 and it goes for several pages but you'll see line by line your budgetary revenues and your budgetary expenditures in the general fund which is your major operating fund and see the kind of growth that you have there and get expenses under control that are very comparable while you did make a lot of good improvements in, uh, in your capital outlay area on equipment and, and needs in the city kind of as you plan to over a two to three year period Lastly, uh, I would point to the reports in the back of this document. They start on page, um, I guess, turn back to page 120. This is the first uh, internal control compliance report at the financial statement level. It's required under governmental audit standards. Uh, it talks about the activities of the city. We're not required to audit internal control. We are required to consider it in planning our audit engagement and the test of, of both procedures and substantive testing that we're going to perform. And in doing that, if we do determine that there are deficiencies, we are required to rank those and to communicate those as they exist as being either significant deficiencies or material weaknesses. Those definitions are in this report. And I'm happy to tell you that we did not have any findings this year. Uh, last year we had one finding. Uh, this is the first time since we've been doing the engagement that uh, that city has not had any findings in their internal control compliance report. So I think you should be very proud of that, both the support that the board as a governing body gives management and then management's uh, department heads and their employees <coughs> go to an extra effort to make sure that you are safeguarding assets and uh, employing proper segregation of duties in your operation. So uh, you've come a long way really in the last three years uh, in that regard to where you were if you went back and looked at these reports five, ten years ago when, you know, frankly, there sometimes was 20 to 30 findings. So I commend you greatly on that. Uh, so this is a clean report with no findings. <coughs> Turn over to page 122. This report is a report on the major federal programs that were tested. <coughs> this particular year, uh, we uh, the threshold for uh, major program and federal assistance for a single audit is seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. The city as a whole, including the utilities, the city and the schools, received about $2.8 million of federal funding. Uh, we tested approximately 40, more than 40% of that as required. And in testing that, uh, those programs and determining the programs that needed to be tested uh, this year, the concentration level of those fell to the Newport Utilities. Glenn's here tonight. We've already presented their report back in December and they received a clean report also as they have for several years and we've not had any findings in quite a while of the school system and in regard to their major <coughs> programs we tested which was some Appalachian Regional Commission grants related to the Grassy Fork area and their uh, community development block grant related to that particular area uh, we didn't have any findings or question costs related to their program dollars uh, for their reports so I'm sure they're proud of that and you all should be too. Uh, on page 124 it describes the programs that we tested in that schedule of findings and question cost, outlines the fact that we had no findings in either area or significant deficiencies and uh, finally on page 125 here in Tennessee the comptroller requires that you show how you disposed or did you dispose of prior year findings and that page shows the one finding related to TCRS last year 
that was not repetitive in the current year audit engagement. It was cleared up. So that's just a, an overview of the financial statements. And if you <coughs> review these, if you have any questions, uh, you know, more than happy to be available. You call me, email me, or whatever if you find any detailed questions you have that Tina and James can't answer for you. And I'll entertain any questions. Frank, I, I just want to thank you and commend you and your company. Worked with you for all these years. Y'all have done an excellent job, very professional. And above all, we thank you for having homegrown Haley with your company. That's a, it's a very excellent addition to your company. We, we really appreciate her. Well, Haley does an excellent job. I'll brag on her. She's, she's from here in Newport, obviously, but uh, she's been with us uh, quite a long time, and she's the in-charge field work uh, supervisor on this engagement and numerous other governmental engagements, not just here. Uh, she's also the in charge field work on Severable, Dandridge, uh, White Pine, and uh, and some other cities that we do because we do about nine to ten and about eight electric systems. And well, this so this audit, works on them. yeah, this audit mirrors this council's intentions to to make Newport a better place. And sometimes you have to make hard decisions, and they're to be commended in. Tina and James and his staff, the whole staff, especially those two, as far as keeping up with the financials of the city. Uh, it, it's wonderful. It's relaxing to know that our city is in good hands and very trustworthy to, to get to that point. Well, I mentioned this earlier, and, and I'll compliment them on this, is, and I, I told you all uh, that you know, this is a historical document, so this this is passed already. You can see what the results are, but the information you get on a monthly basis, daily, weekly basis, that's important in decision making and being responsive, you know, to your citizens' needs, and to know that you can better rely on that information that it has integrity and carried weight in making decisions in your decision process and your deliberations. That's very important not only to you all, but for the function that you carry out for your citizens. So I commend them on that so you can have that kind of reliability in the information you're currently getting. Frank, I'd just like to say that I uh, um, appreciate your findings, and in this case, no findings. Uh, a lot of people, we're two year, years into this thing, and we've had to make some tough decisions, but, uh, you know, uh, you commended us, and we're commending that group. I want to, you know, commend the citizens. They, they're the ones that had to bite the bullet for us, and, uh, and uh, a lot of people, you know, base a progress on maybe bricks and mortar, but uh, this right here shows us, shows me, that we're making some progress, you know, and for one of the citizens who, uh, you know, put faith in us to, make these crazy and tough decisions. I don't think we would be seeing this right now. So uh, um, I think we're making progress. Uh, still a lot, a lot of things to do, but uh, this is a good start. I think if people know where their money's going and what the benefits out of it, knowing there's not ways, just doing what you're trying to do. If they understand the whole truth, I don't think there's near as much griping about it as there has been. I believe things are getting calmed down. Thanks, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Let's give our community a hand. Okay. Item three is consideration of request for annual events from Cock County Partnership. You've got that list. Lynn, you need to talk about these to us. Just, just ask if it's okay and we want to do the concert series again and have five concerts this year. And I've got the dates on the and then the street festival it's okay. the same weekend as always the first weekend of october and then the christmas parade it's okay. the second saturday of december we have a motion to approve this for them make a motion to approve it second. It's got a second any discussion all those in favor indicate the saying yes yes, yes. any no's i hear them thank you land okay the item that we waive the rules to add to the agenda uh the nub uh, broadband program
Thank you guys for suspending the rules today to let us get on the agenda. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to educate yourselves about the uh, Smart Grid Broadband Program. So here's why I'm here tonight to request approval for the following items and they're, they're grouped into one large approval. Approval of the electric smart grid slash broadband implementation business plan next steps. Authority to apply for interim financing in the amount of $8.5 million plus interest which will very likely be a callable bond or other type of interim financing vehicle that meets our requirements to bridge the gap until our rural utility system loan funds become available and the authority to apply for USDA slash RUS electric smart grid loans or other federal or state grants that are available any and all. That's the end of the request. Okay. And you did make the comment, I mean, that this doesn't come out of the, the consumers. This, this, does not, this does not come out of the electric funds at all. Right. It doesn't affect the electric bills at all. I've been to two different workshops that they've had out there on this, and I think it's one of the things, if you go through, that make one of the biggest progress in our county, city and county, that's been made in years. I mean, people talk about how far behind we are, but I think it just will make a great big difference putting this up in the next century. Glenn, to expand on what he said there, the, uh, I've attended one of those workshops. This is something that a select few in the state have, right? Bristol, yes. Chattanooga, uh, that, and... Uh, 14, 14, about 14, 14 counties in the state. And uh, uh, when, you, when you first talked about this, uh, way back when, talking about the feasibility study, I, I, I went in with open ears and didn't really know what um, I was getting into as far as learning. But uh, from the reports that this Magellan Advisors offered, and the and the po the possibilities of it, and you know, I echo what Coach Prada said. I, I don't think we know what the upside of this is. Uh, of course, Magellan painted a pretty picture, and I think it's a realistic picture. And the numbers that they presented, with uh, you know, their percentages of people accepting the uh, uh, becoming us becoming their provider. Uh, was was uh, was uh, on the low level, but uh, you know, for our future and our financial future, you know, I, I commend you know your due diligence on this. And if the numbers back up what Magellan says, this is going to be something that's going to be a, a feather in uh, Newport's hat for for a long time, not only financially, uh, but for you know the all, uh, almighty jobs that could come with this. So um, I'm very I'm very impressed with your due diligence and, and your staff's due diligence as well. Thank you. <coughs> Do we have a motion to approve for that? I'll make a motion. Second. Have a second. Any other questions or discussion? Well Mayor, just for the record, I think it'd be uh, good that you read exactly what we're approving, the three steps, so that uh, that we uh, form the motion. Okay. Step one would be the approval of the electric smart grid broadband implementation business plan. Next steps. Number two would be the authority to apply for interim financing in the amount of $8.5 million plus interest, a callable bond or other type of an interim financing vehicle that meets our requirements to bridge the gap until our U.S. loan funds become available and item three, authority to apply for USDA slash RUS electric smart grid loan and other federal or state grants that are available. RUS rural utility, rural utility services. services. That's, that's, that's your motion. That's your motion. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's your second? Yeah. Any other discussion? <coughs> All those in favor indicate by saying yes. 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 Opposed is no. I hear none. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate the work y'all done. Great job. You people from utilities, uh, appreciate the job y'all done. I know it's been a good effort out there. So appreciate Okay, there's no bids uh, <coughs> on the agenda tonight. Comments from citizens. <coughs> now, I'll see you. Need we have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. 
All those in favor indicate you're saying yes. 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 Anybody against it? 